Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to white balance an image using just one adjustment layer, just like that. It's a very easy trick and it works out well if you have a pure white, a pure black, or a pure gray someplace in your image. I'll show you all three techniques. But first, I've been getting several questions recently about how I have such good control and what kind of mouse I'm using. Now there are two parts to that. One part is that I'm using a gaming mouse. That helps a lot because you can set the sensitivity of the gaming mouse. When you're coming in and making a selection, you can be really careful with that selection because of increased sensitivity. So a better mouse will help. Also, one thing I like about a gaming mouse is that they usually have programmable buttons on the mouse. And I have a button right next to my thumb that I can click on that button and it brings up the save dialog box. and lets me save with just one fast click on the button. I don't have to do anything fancy on the keyboard. I don't have to go up here and go to save or save as. It's all done just in that one mouse click right there on the side of the mouse. That's the first part of it. The second part is that I move the mouse using just my fingertips. And that may seem a bit difficult to do, but it's easy if you have a wrist rest that you're using when you're using your mouse. Now there are a bunch of different types of wrist rests. Almost any of them are okay. All that matters is that you can rest your wrist or your palm on something and then move the mouse with just your fingers and get much, much better control. And if I had to choose between a good mouse or adding a wrist rest, I'd do the wrist rest first. It actually does add a lot to your ability just with being able to isolate the motion down to your fingers. Okay, let's take a look at this image here. It's a very easy trick. And if you have a pure white like I have on this, it's gonna take it just a couple of seconds to actually make this adjustment. Let me show you how that's done. I'm gonna trash this right here, get that layer out of the way. And we'll be using the levels control. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels right here. I only have just the one layer, so I don't need to check that or anything. Here we go. Now I use this all the time in almost every single video. I'll use this to bring in a little bit more black possibly or a little bit more white in here to add more contrast to an image. That's a standard trick that I do. Let me just bring those back out again. But over here on the right hand side, these allow you to white balance your image. The top one up here is for the black point, middle one is for a gray point, and the bottom one is for a white point. On this image, I happen to know that she is wearing a white dress. So anything that should be pure white, like right down here, real easy with this white point. Just click on that white spot, and there we go instantaneous color balance from just one click. Now we still need to come back in and bring in some more values in here. So I bring in a bit of a darker value like that and maybe adjust the midtones a little bit for a better looking image, but it's that fast if you have a good color tone to match. Let's say we don't have that. I don't have a good white in here. The next thing would be to try for a black. So up here to your black point, there's some black tires back here. Let me try the black tires. Now that really didn't do anything for me. Let me just try around a few spots in here. Okay, you can see I'm not getting a good color match. That's not too bad. It's a bit on the green side, but it's not too bad. The problem is that there are lots and lots of colors here inside that black area, and it's not a real solid black either. So because of that, I can't get a real good color match on that. One thing you can try is to increase your black point like this. Just pull that up a bit, and then come in and see if you can get a better match and that actually does help quite a bit. You see I got a lot closer that time. What I'm doing here is I'm forcing the dark grays into black which should give me more of an actual black point and that's not too bad. It's still a little on the warm side but that's a lot closer by doing that trick with pulling in that black. Okay the last one here to use is the gray point and this is good if you don't have any whites or blacks in your image and a lot of times you won't but most images will have a gray someplace in them. Now, it may not be where you're thinking. Let's go ahead, we'll click on this one. And this is obviously gray in here. So I'll take that and let's choose something kind of a midpoint gray. And that's not too bad. It's a bit of a, looks like a greenish tint, just a slight greenish tint. We could adjust that with a photo filter or something to bring that back. So there is definitely a nice grayish in here, but it still is a little bit off from a pure gray. So what we need is to have a pure gray someplace in our image. And the question is, how do you find that pure gray? Now this is a little bit of a trick. So I'll work you through this one. Let's just turn off that adjustment right now. I just hit that adjustment, close the adjustment panel in there. Let's make a new layer right here. And I need to fill this with a perfect gray. So let's go up here to Window, 
come down to color swatches and you have all these swatches in here. These are all perfect grays. Now what I want is the 50% gray, that's 45, that's 50. Click on that. That sets the foreground color here to a 50% gray. Grab your paint bucket, click inside. We now have the whole image here colored in an exact 50% gray. Let's now blend this into our image down here. Go up here to our blend modes and come down to difference. And this looks really weird, but it's doing what I need it to do. It is highlighting the areas that are different from that 50% gray. Anything lighter is going one direction. Anything darker is going kind of a negative. And right at where those two meet is an exact 50% gray, or at least very, very close to that. And we can use that with another layer up here. Go up to layer, come down to adjustment layer, and then down here to threshold. What this does is it converts the image to a pure black or white, no grays or anything else. And the dividing line in there, you can kind of adjust where that dividing line is. Let me show you that trick. She's okay. Now, I want to have this looking at all of our layers in here, so that's correct. Threshold's right in the middle. If I move this a little ways up, I begin to see more of that image. So you can kind of see how that works. Now, to find that exact gray, go clear to the top like this, and then slowly move that back in just a little bit, and you begin seeing some values come in. These in here, when we're first just beginning to see it, these are going to be 50% grays in the image because we're running this through that 50% gray layer and through that difference blend mode. So right up in here, there's a nice spot with what should be a good 50% gray. Let's close this. I'm going to zoom in on that. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse for that zoom. Hold the space bar down. Let's just get this up here. Now I have my rulers showing. That's up here, view, come down to rulers. I can then pull guidelines off of this. And just come right in here into the middle of that spot. That should be a nice basic gray right in there. Move back out again, so right up here. We can now close those down, we're done with those things. Let's bring our adjustment layer back up again. Double click on that icon. And I'm gonna zoom in up here so I can really see that. You can see there actually is a pretty good gray. I mean, there's a lot of other grays around it in here, lots and lots of little grays around it. So you wanna get it as close as you can, and that should be a good spot. Let's grab our set gray point. Now to be able to see what we're doing here, we're zoomed in so far, there is a trick to make this just a little bit easier. Go up to view, new window at the top, and here's a new window. This is the exact same thing. We're just seeing it zoomed in up here and not zoomed in down there. So let's go back up here. We're on our control, hit that gray point, and let's go right where that intersection was. Click on that. And there we go, see that color change. And we have a much, much better white balance in there based upon a gray. We can still improve this a little bit, but that gave us a really good white balance without having a solid white or a solid black someplace else in the image. And most of the time, you'll be able to find a gray somewhere in your image. Okay, let's close this down. I'm going to zoom out of this now. I'll just do control zero, get back to this. There is our image. Come in here and let's boost the darks a little bit. Boost our whites just a little bit like that. And I think we have a real nice color balance now, white balance based upon that gray. So a little bit of work to come in and find that gray point, but it still works as you can see very, very well. It's not as good as if you had a pure white, but it's the next best thing if you don't have any pure white or black in your image. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, of course, my videos here can teach you quite a bit, but I have a whole course going through everything on how to do Photoshop Elements, and you'll find that course over at my How To Gurus website. I'll put a link for that in the description. And if you want to have a tool that will help you as you're working with your images, it will help you as you're learning how to use Photoshop Elements, where you can actually go in and ask questions and then get answers back on those questions. I have a product which I call the HTG Photo Coach is a text-based interactive help system where you go in and you can just type in what you want to find out about. It will come back with a selection of articles to choose from. And these articles will be lists or step-by-step -step instructions on how to use all the different parts, tools, panels, and so forth inside of Photoshop Elements. And if you like this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.